Hey, TVs. This is Lord Bob. I'm just here looking at my cool pentacle I'm wearing today. Check this out. Isn't that beautiful? It's made of pewter and it's got a little purple gemstone in it in the middle. I love my pentacles, you know. These days I'm an open Wiccan and I buy big pentacles and I wear them openly. And, you know, I just believe that for those of us in the craft who can come out and be a public face, I think it's helping make it easier for a lot of people who are still in the broom closet. And I've been thinking about that, you know, as, as I've evolved over the years in my craft and my practice, I've been a Wiccan 16 years now. I started in around 1999, 2000. So yeah, 16, almost 17 years probably here. And um, when I first started, I was very secretive and in the closet. And I was in a job where I couldn't come out as a witch because I would be fired from my job. And I know people say, well, that's illegal. They can't do that. But you know what? It still does happen. And I live in Virginia, which is an at-will state, which means employers can fire you without notice for any reason they decide. So even though they may not write on the paper fired for practicing Wicca, they'll find something. And so for a long time, I had to be secret. But, you know, these days I'm open about who I am, and I feel like it's my duty to kind of be a public face of the craft, especially for people who are still limited and in the closet because of prejudice, because of illegal practices and companies. And I think that the more of us who can stand out, we can be that voice. One of the people I've always admired was Scott Cunningham. Many of you know I love his books. I love his work. And uh, I've been reading, uh, you know, recently one of his books that I got. Maybe you guys have seen this. It's called Cunningham's Book of Shadows. And this was actually his actual Book of Shadows that he used uh, that was taken and compiled after his death and put into a, a text. And I really recommend this book. Um, I have a picture of Scott Cunningham here. For those of you who don't know who he is, um, he was one of the pioneers in bringing Wicca into a greater public face. Um, he helped pioneer uh, the concept that self-initiation is okay. And his probably his most famous book is the one that's uh, Wicca, a guide for the solitary practitioner. I'll put that up here for you. That's the first book I ever read, and but I've loved him ever since. I've read almost all of his books. This one I had never seen, and I thought, oh, you know, it's probably just a rehash of the old stuff. But really, this has a lot of new stuff I've never seen from Scott because this was his own personal working book of shadows. Um, and I really love it. I, I think that people should get this and read it. Uh, it's got a lot of beautiful spells in it. Um, it's just, it's beautiful. In fact, let me just read you some of the table of contents here. Uh, it says, um, like chapter one, words from the old ones. The next chapter, calling the god and goddess, creating sacred space, the Sabbaths, full moon rites, prayers, chants, and invocations, rites and lore, recipes for the feast, an herbal grimoire, herbal recipes and secrets, incenses, oils, magical lore, spells and rituals, systems of power, rune magic, signs and symbols. So that's some of the contents. And then afterwards, they have a bunch of um, appendices, uh, which are basically testimonies of people who knew Scott Cunningham, who worked with him, and they share about their experience with him and how he was as a Wiccan. It's a beautiful book. Um, <coughs> You really capture, excuse me, my voice is going to, you really capture Scott Cunningham's spirit through this. And 
you know, I'm just so sad uh, he's no longer with us. He died in 1993, so it's, wow, it's gone on 20, was it 25 years now um, since he's been gone? It's hard to believe. Wow. Anyways, but uh, I wanted to read to you just a little section here. This is in the introduction to his book in the first chapter, and it's called Words from the Elder. There you can see it, Words from the Elder. Um, so anyways, just pull up your chairs, gather around. Let's just have a little reading today. Words from the Elder. O ye daughters and sons of the earth, adore the gods and be blessed by them with the fullness of life. Know that they have brought you to these writings, for herein lie the secrets of the craft of Wicca, to serve and fulfill the keepers of the wisdom, the tenders of the sacred flame of knowledge, <clears throat> Run ancient rites with love and joy, and the gods will confound those who work against you. But for those who work harm needlessly, their curse shall be their only fruit, shall be the only fruit. Remember, keep close to your heart that you are of the wise. No longer do you trod the ways of humanity. You slip, you skip on the path of light, ever climbing from shadow to shadow to the highest realm of existence. But though we are keepers of truth, man does not wish to share our knowledge. <clears throat> so we meet in the shadows and run our rights beneath moon-filled skies, but we are happy. Live life fully, for that is why we are here. Refrain not from earthly life, for from such we grow and learn and understand until such time that we are reborn to learn more and to repeat the cycle till we have spiraled up the path to perfection and can finally call the gods our kindred. Walk the fields and forests. Be refreshed by the cool winds and the touch of a nodding, a touch of nodding flower, of a nodding flower, excuse me. Let me reread that. Be refreshed by the cool winds and the touch of a nodding flower. There we go. I can't read today. The sun and moon sing in the ancient and wild places the deserted seashore, the hushed valley, the raging waterfall. We are of the earth and should revere her. So walk lightly upon the ground and honor her. Celebrate the rites on the appropriate days and seasons and call the gods when the time is meet, but use the power only when necessary not for frivolous ends. And know that using the power for harm be a perversion in the sight of the gods. But for those who love and magnify love, as the dewdrop magnifies the sun, the richness of life shall be your reward and all of nature will celebrate. So, Love the gods and harm none. Blessed be. Isn't that amazing? That's Scott Cunningham. That's the intro to his book, uh, Book of Shadows. You know, when I read this, it reads so beautifully. You can tell that he's truly channeling. He's truly connecting to higher truth. And, it, you know, this sort of energy rebounds throughout this book. He has the beginning about the creation story. He has the nature of our way. He talks about the laws of Wicca. He has invocations. This book 
is truly like poetry. And I think really the best spellcraft is in a sense a form of poetry. And I think the best poetry in a sense is really like spellcraft. So there's an interplay of magic and mundane. But if you want to get inspired and you want to capture that spirit of Scott Cunningham, do yourself a favor, pick up this book, Cunningham's Book of Shadows. I tell you, I could, I could talk all day. On. There's so much more, but I'll stop there today because that's a lot to think about. I want you just to go back and listen to that reading again and just meditate on it. Let it soak into you. You know, as a Wiccan, I, I find such peace in my practice. And I think Scott Cunningham really exemplifies and typifies the presence of peace that this practice, that this faith, that this religion brings to people's lives, people who truly practice it from the right place and with the right intent. You know, maybe you're at a place right now in your life where you feel things are just kind of flat and maybe you're not, you know, particularly feeling inspired. Maybe you feel you've lost your magic. Maybe you haven't even begun to start to discover your magic. Wherever you are, though, I think that if you start reading this book and you capture his words, his wisdom, I think they're infused with magic. I think it will infuse you with magic. So if you say, well, Bob, how do I get magic into my life? I did a spell the other day. Nothing happens. I don't feel anything. You know, my thing would be, did you make your spell poetic? Did you go to the deepest recesses of your soul? And did you pull from there? That's where magic's found. And that's what I get out of this book. It really comes from Scott's deepest soul, his deepest self, and that's where magic resides. So as I read it, it takes me to that place and it brings me a lot of joy. So if you wanna have joy in your life, you wanna have magic in your life, you wanna have the spirit of Wicca in your life, create from the deepest part. Draw that inspiration from the spirit. Channel it in, channel it up. A lot of people don't know channeling goes both ways. You can channel power in from above, but you can also channel power from within you up and send it out. So this book, it, it takes me there. It does. It takes me there. And um, I think it'll take you there too. One of the very best things. I'm so glad that they went ahead and published this. This was actually published after his death. His friends who were in charge of his estate and his family thought it should be released. Now, maybe Scott himself would have died at thought of his private book being published. But you know, honestly, there's nothing in here that is uh, embarrassing at all. It's so inspirational, so moving, that I think he himself would have even agreed that, wow, I'm glad we let it out there. You know, he was all about sharing your craft. He wasn't into big, heavy, dark secrets. So I don't think he, you know, he may not have been so self-aggrandized and said, well, I'm going to publish my book. Um, but I think that seeing what is really out there now, I think he would be joyful with it. So I love it. I think it's a blessing, and I hope you'll get it. It's uh, by Scott Cunningham called Cunningham's book of shadows. Do yourself a drink at it. Well, guys, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for being part of Spirit Channel. Um, I'm going to keep this brief today. Psyche Bob's been very busy. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of readings going on, but I'd still love to read for any of you who want to get on my schedule. I do do phone readings and uh, or in person, so you can have Psyche Bob for an hour either way. Anyways, if you want, give a call to my office, 571-483-2112. I got my phone, and I can talk. Anyways, thanks for being here. I send you my blessings, and um, hope you'll check this book out. Anyways, keep it here. Tomorrow is Thursday, and we've got Zodiac Thursday, and you don't want to miss that. So definitely be here for that. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, um, I thought maybe if you'd share with me your thoughts. Tell me in the box below um, 
you know, do you like Scott Cunningham? Have you read his books? Have you read particularly this book? Do you have this? Have you worked with it? I find a lot of spells in this that I haven't seen in his other stuff. So it's got a lot of, a lot of stuff. Some of it does. There are some things that drift over, but not much. Um, but it's really wonderful. So I'd like to hear your thoughts about Scott Cunningham and also about this book. Tell me in the box below. By the way, if you're new here, hope you'll join us. Hit subscribe, be part of our channel. And if you're a regular here, hope you'll like this favorite, share it with your friends. Let's get it out. And, uh, you know, definitely subscribe, be part of our community. And for those of you who want to join the Order of the Purple Corps, pop over to my website at robert-ekman.com uh, and you can send me a, an email there and uh, you can read about the order, what our requirements are, and uh, you send us an application, uh, you know, just an email saying you want to join uh, and you agree with the Wick and Read and uh, we'll get you in, okay? Thank you so much, guys. You rock. I love all of you. Mm. Blessings to you, and may you all blessed be. We'll see you back here tomorrow for Zodiac Thursday. Good day.